We are going to talk about anabolic steroids and body composition. How much do steroids really affect muscle growth and fat loss? Now, this topic is often debated with a lot of hostility, and that's because people's opinions tend to fall at extreme ends of the spectrum. So at one end you have someone who sees a photo of a bodybuilder on Facebook, immediately engages in keyboard warrior mode and says, yeah, but they take steroids. Kind of it immediately eradicates everything else that person's done. They take steroids, so of course they have a good physique. That's it. Then on the other end of the spectrum, you have the perspective, perhaps from the drug user themselves. Yes, I take steroids, but I have to work as hard, if not harder than you, to get results. Steroids don't provide results on their own, they just allow us to work harder. So what is the truth? To me, this is often a case of overplaying or underplaying the effects of anabolic steroids. So of course, what I'm going to do is bring a little bit of science to the topic and then give you my kind of personal summary. So the first study I'm going to talk about is one from 1996. This gave people 600 milligrams per week of testosterone and anthate over a 10 week period. They also isolated the effects of testosterone administration from exercise by splitting them into two subgroups. So what we have is testosterone versus placebo, testosterone split into an exercise and no exercise group, placebo split into an exercise and no exercise group. I'm going to post up one of the graphs here and then talk you through it. So in the purposes of being concise, I'm going to look at the top graph only, which is the changes in fat free mass. As you go down, you have other measurements of muscle growth, and then you have bench press and squat strength. But looking at the top graph only. So in the first column, you have people who didn't train and didn't take testosterone, the placebo plus no exercise group. There's no statistically significant change in fat-free mass. You see a tiny jump there, but that's it, obviously. In the second column, you have the testosterone plus no exercise group. So they were injecting testosterone, but they did not lift weights. Over the 10 week period, they achieved 3.2 kilogram gain in fat-free mass. In the third column, you have the placebo plus exercise group. So they worked out, but they did not take steroids. They achieved a 1.9 kilogram gain in fat-free mass, lower than people who took testosterone and did not work out. Then in the furthest column, you have the testosterone plus exercise group who achieved a 6.1 kilogram gain in fat-free mass. So basically, testosterone administration without exercise resulted in a higher gain in fat-free mass than people who worked out naturally. So if you have one person who's training naturally and another person that is taking steroids, even with poor training, they could surpass their gains in fat-free mass. So to say that steroid use does not provide results on its own, are incorrect. Now, of course, you could debate what would happen over a longer period of time. Is this an initial change in muscle glycogen or water or whatever you want? Would the results carry on if you extended it past 10 weeks? And that's up for debate. But to say that they don't provide results on their own is incorrect. You don't have to work harder to get the same results. You can work less or not at all and still achieve significant gains in fat-free mass. Now, the next study that I'm going to talk about looks at a dose-response curve of testosterone administration, and this is from 2001. So a dose-response curve is basically administering varying doses to see what happens. Now, what I've done is created my own chart on this to make it a little bit easier to compare them. So this is my own chart from the study, and I'll post it up now. So A, what you can see changes in fat-free mass. 25 milligram dose, then 50, then 125, then 300, and then 600 milligrams per week. Obviously, as you can see, as the dose gets higher, changes in fat-free mass increase. But also, and this is the bit that a lot of people overlook, when you go to changes in fat mass in the B graph, as the dose of testosterone goes up, subjects also lose fat which means on the highest dose of 600 milligrams, not only did they achieve the highest gains in fat-free mass, but they also lost fat mass. Now for a natural person to gain that much, 7.9 kilogram gain in lean mass in the 600 milligram group, how long would it take for someone not taking steroids to achieve that? Especially with a simultaneous loss of 1.1 kilograms of fat mass. How long would it take for someone not taking steroids to achieve that? I'm just going to throw that out there and, and let you answer that one. 
So to say that steroids don't provide someone with an advantage on their own is incorrect. As the dose of steroids go up, even if the training is kept the same, gains in fat-free mass go up significantly and also are accompanied with a drop in fat mass. Something that if you presented to a natural athlete as an option, they would give you their arm for. The holy grail. Now, here are the things. People will, steroid users can often argue with this, that this is perhaps a first cycle. So steroid use over a longer period of time, this is just a kind of sudden result and results would then level off, which is a fair point. But then on the other side, you could say, yeah, but this is also only one steroid cycle. This is only one drug. A lot of steroid users will stack drugs and they'll use multiple compounds. So this is looking at testosterone administration on its own, not stacking with orals, not using higher doses, not having other injectables. So yes, it only provides a small snippet. It doesn't show you what's gonna happen in the long term. And we're never gonna have studies that look at, you know, very controlled steroid cycles over many years. But basically, we know that from 10-week periods, you can gain more fat-free mass with steroid use, even without working out than someone who trains naturally. So that's it. I hope you found it interesting. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. My Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Ben Carpenter Personal Training. My Twitter and Instagram pages are both BDC Carpenter. And thank you for watching.